February of 1988. After losing the title to Meldrick Taylor in September, McGirt returned to action in January of this year, determined to get the title back. But his wins over mediocre competition haven't brought him any closer to a title shot, and a hand injury forced him to lay off for several weeks. McGirt has decided now to take a shot at the welterweight division, where he thinks he has a good chance to be successful. He says he couldn't get his weight down to the 140-pound limit any longer. I was having problems for the last year, really, of making 140. It was just taking too much out of me physically. It was draining me, and, uh, you know, I was lucky my last three fights and um, to go the distance, you know, because uh, the, the weight that was draining out of me, I was very weak. My body was still growing, and I'm getting a little older, so, you know, it all added up, you know, and I seen it coming after I won the title, you know, the, you know as far as losing the weight, because I would take off for two weeks and just, you know, eat normally and I'll put on weight, you know, very fast, but it was very, getting hard to get off, you know, and for the Howard Davis and the Melrick Taylor fight, I really killed myself to make the weight. McGirt feels his speed and power will be just as good in the welterweight division as it was before. He takes a look at the champions at 147 pounds and thinks he can beat any of the three. But also in his mind is the memory of losing his championship to Meldrick Taylor. And he vows he'll get his revenge. I'm going to meet Magic Teller one way or another. Whether if we meet in the ring or whether we meet his old men, I will meet him again. You know, he's got a beating coming for me, you know, and uh, it's, going to, it's going to happen. It's got to happen. As long as I'm living, it's got to happen. But um, if he moves up to 147, he would do anything in the world to avoid me. He does not want to fight me again. He knows it and everybody else knows it. Do you expect him to move up? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. I expect him because he's still young and his body's growing. And uh, I'm just going to lay down. I'm going to be like a hunter. I'm just going to sit back and wait for him. I know he's coming. Buddy McGirt leaves behind the junior welterweight division, which has some impressive names at the top, including Julio Cesar Chavez, who just won the title. But McGirt isn't convinced of Chavez's greatness. I want to see him fight a real fighter like Buddy McGirt, someone who can switch up in the middle of the fight and who would fight under any circumstances. Are you envious of a guy like Chavez? Not at all, because my day is coming, you know. It wasn't meant for me back then to be as big as Tyson and everybody. You know, I was world champion, yeah, but just wasn't big for me to get into the really big, big spotlight. But I know my day is coming. And he hopes to make it come a lot sooner by starting off tonight. And he's into the ring. And his uh, mother and his son, James Jr., in attendance at ringside <laughs> and having a good time. Let's go out of the ring to Ed Darian for the introductions to our main event. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. It's scheduled for 10 rounds and it's in a welterweight division. And it's being promoted by Madison Square Garden Boxing. Bob Goodman, Vice President of Boxing and Matchmaker, and Pat Fleming, Assistant Matchmaker. It's approved by the New York State Athletic Commission, the Honorable Randy Gordon Chairman. The judges, Harold Letterman, Barbara Perez and Tony Castellano. Counting for the knockdown seconds, alternate referee Carl Duke Schroeder. The timekeeper to Bell is Cecilio Pedraja. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10 round welterweight belt, referee Joe Santarpia. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks with the black trim. He weighed in at an even 150 pounds. This gentleman has 15 wins, 12 losses, two draws, with seven knockouts. He is a native of Caracas, Venezuela, and now residing in Miami, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Orlando Orozco. Orozco. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the blue trunks with the white trim. He tipped in at 148 and one quarter pounds. This young man has 41 wins, two losses, one draw, with 34 knockouts. The former International Boxing Federation Junior Welterweight Champion. He is currently ranked number two by the International Boxing Federation and number five by the World Boxing Council, both in the Junior Welterweight Division. From Brentwood, Long Island, New York, ladies and gentlemen, here is James Buddy McGirt. McGirt. 
manager Al Cerdo alongside Buddy McGirt. And you know, Gil, though they deny it, I really believe that part of the reason that Buddy McGirt moved up to welterweight, besides just the weight, was he took a look at that junior welterweight division, and there wasn't any title fight available for him there. Well, that, that's just about what happened. You know, Mildred Gill is on the shelf now, and Koji's going to fight Frankie Warren, and uh, Chavez is uh, waiting for another, another big fight. Chavez is talking uh, Camacho. And uh, that would have left Buddy out in the cold, and I think he's, he's making a smart move. We'll, we'll see tonight, but I think he can handle a, a good, strong welterweight. His, his, his trainer, Al Soto, says he boxes middleweights in the gym and can handle them. Orlando Orozco fighting for the second time this year, fought in February in Venezuela, won an eight-round decision. Orozco has fought twice previously here in New York. Was stopped in the second round by Mark Breland in 1986. And lost the 10-round decision to Glenwood Brown last year. doesn't waste any motion at all, Sammy. He's just such a complete fighter. Paints, just knows what to do. Oh, keep him up, keep him up. Good right hand. It was set up, he fainted with his feet. And that's what the old timers do, fainted through his feet and just threw that right hand. Beautiful move. And we've often talked about Buddy McCurt being a throwback to the old time fighters. The way he's worked in the gym, the way he's traveled to Jersey City to train. The way he went down to Frankie Warren's hometown to win, win the Junior Welterweight Championship. He was moving away, and he was right back on top of Orozco. McGirt changing his leads. Right-hand lead, pop the jab in there. Occasionally lead with a left hook. Good work by Orozco on the inside. Yeah, but his punching was strictly an off punch, Sam. Orozco, 32 years old. He's been fighting professionally for nine years. Good combination by McGirt. Coming to the end of round one, scheduled for ten. When the bases are loaded and Jose Canseco's at the plate with over 50,000 screaming fans in the stands, I'm in my element. I love it. But put me in front of 200 people on the first tee and I can hear the grass growing. It's right then that I'm glad I took lessons from my Southern Texas professional. There's nothing worse than whiffing in front of a crowd of 200 people. Just ask Jose Canseco. See your Southern Texas professional soon. This message brought to you by your Southern Texas golf professionals. Making golf a better game for all of us. We want you to know that if you or someone you love is suffering from the pain of osteoarthritis, there is treatment available to make living with the disease bearable. The Arthritis Research Institute of America urges you to see your doctor. He can recommend a treatment that can lessen your minor aches and pains and the chances of the disease disabling you. For more information, contact the Arthritis Research Institute of America, Clearwater, Florida. Two of our main event, Buddy McGirt in the blue trunks, Orlando Orozco in the gold. McGirt weighing in at slightly more than 148, and that's probably the heaviest we've seen him fight at field. Heaviest I've ever seen him fight at, but he looks good, Sam. Yeah. His body looks in great physical condition. No added weight, no added fat, I should say. Can 
continues to work the body on McGurk. Again, Sam, the punches have no sting, strictly with the arm. Good nice, right hand by Nice McGurk. counter over the jab. The other question I have, Gil, is can McGurk be a knockout puncher in the welterweight division? Well, Sam, uh, he, he was never really a one-punch knockout guy, but he throws accurate punches, and they take effect on him. And I think the same thing will happen when he fights welterweights. But again, this also, when you get inside with these bigger guys, it's a test of strength. Will he be able to push the, the, the welterweights around, 47, 48 pounds, the way he was able to move the uh, junior welterweights? A lot of difference of seven to eight pounds, but I just think that Buddy's uh, the kind of kid that can handle it. You know, look, looking at the champions in the welterweight division, Mark Breland, Simon Brown, Marlon Starling. McGirt feels a couple of good outings as a full-fledged welterweight could earn him a shot at one of those titles. Well, I know that uh, Simon Brown's promoter called CBS and asked him if uh, asked CBS if they'd be interested in the McGirt-Simon uh, Brown fight, and we certainly would. Good left hook scores by McGirt. And the right hand scores by McGirt. And the Roscoe wobbled Sam after that right hand. A little shaky. McGirt's been on target with his punches. Still says there's some soreness in his right hand. He suffered tendonitis in the right hand. He's been out for several weeks. Says he just has to fight through the pain. All right, now you see, well, that, that's, again, the old school fighters. Here, when he fought Meldrick Taylor, no way in the world he should have fought the fight, but he just did not want to pull out. You know, Sam, when a, when a fighter's in training, and they've trained five or six weeks for a fight, Something definitely has to hurt them. And if they don't want to fight, they can always find, well, my hand hurts, my back hurts, because you're getting hit in those six weeks in the gym, you're not gonna feel like a million dollars. End of round two. Almost looks like McGirt is pacing himself through the first couple of rounds. Yes, yes, it does. It looks like he's in there just trying to get some work. Yeah, cool. Yeah, good, champ. Al Cerdo, Howie Albert, Danny Milano, and Aldo Fabrizio working with Buddy McGirt. Okay. Hook him to the bottom. Right. Set him up. Okay. Okay. All right. Wake off your jab, too. All right, too. Okay. 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 And young Mr. McGirt in attendance. It's James Jr. Round three. Scheduled for ten. Buddy McCart in the blue, Orlando Orozco in the gold, or the yellow if you prefer. And uh, Al Soto told Buddy McGurk, work off your jab and then hook to the body. Set him up. Welterweight night here at Madison Square Garden's Felt Forum. Saw the up-and-coming Larry Barnes fight very well. Aaron Superman Davis throwing out the challenge to the welterweights in attendance. Mark Breland, the champion. Glenwood, the real Beast Brown in attendance. He wanted a piece of Aaron Davis. You know, we can have some interesting welterweight tournament right here in New York, Madison Square Garden. It was getting so hectic in there. Tunde Foster, a lightweight, said, hey, I want to be a welterweight too. Get me in there. Tunde Foster will headline the card next month. June the 15th. Fight night at the Felt Forum. Darrell Tyson also on that card. Beautiful paint and beautiful left hook by Buddy McGurk. Nice combination by McGurk. Shakes Orozco and again the left hook scores. Look how calm McGurk is, how he sets you up. Orozco just not landing at all. The 
Gert just starting to take apart Orozco here. I like that short left hook counter. You know, Buddy McGirt is one of the few guys I know that can skip back and hit you while he's backing up. Throws that little left hook in there. That's the punch that uh, Robinson scored so many great knockouts with. Punch that Gene Fullman never saw. that McGirt hasn't countered over some of those misses by Orozco. Well, the guy is an awkward guy. Again, he punches with his arms, which puts him back in position very quickly, Sam. He doesn't expose himself that much. There's that left hook. That's the punch that Soto was talking about. Good set up the other punches. Good-looking punch for the body. And a quick left hook to the head lands. And McGirt follows up with a straight right. Was blocked by Orozco, but most of them are landing. It's all Buddy McGirt thus far. We'll be right back. See your home movies on your own TV. We live the one four scheduled for ten. It's all Buddy McGirt thus far, and unless. Can come up with a secret weapon. It's going to be all Buddy McGirt as long as McGirt wants this fight to last. I don't think that Orozco has landed a clean punch in the entire fight. McGirt's hands real quick. He's so accurate with his punches. And as we have pointed out so many times in past fights and watching McGirt, his defense is superb. He picks off punches, he slips punches well. That time he just slipped. Still have to wonder if the pain in that right hand, the tendonitis in the middle knuckle of that right hand bothers McGirt enough so that he doesn't, that he holds back just well, a little bit. Sam, he's he boxed this entire round. There's a first right hand I think he's throwing the entire round. Every, every time I say something, they prove you wrong, but uh, he had been fighting the entire round with the left hand, now he's coming on with the right. It looks like he saves it a little bit. Yes, it, it looks that way to me too. Well, if he gets by this one and comes out clean, he's got a tough opponent in his next fight, Tony Baltazar on CBS. Well, Orozco finally landed a couple of punches, even though they were low. <laughs> Gotta try something. You see Buddy McGrath up to the mark, away, skips in, skips out. Joe Santarpia, the referee, stepping in. again by McGirt. And follows up, he rocked. Orozco with the right hand. The finishing punch of the three-punch combination. Orozco steadies. No wasted motion with Buddy McGirt. Left hook scores again as Orozco continues to take a pounding. He's hit, he's hit Orozco with every punch in the book. Hook, hook to the body, hook to the head, right hand to the head. Keeps changing off. Orozco keeps backing off. Not much he can do against McGirt. He's outclassed by Buddy McGirt. End of the fourth round. And right now a shutout building for Buddy McGirt. That was a round they could put in a boxing textbook, Sam. Showed everything in the book. Al Cerdo, the man in the ring. Howie Albert, alongside, outside the ropes. Could have been an electrician. Make up your mind. You want to watch cars or what do you want? You look like a million dollars. Now 
you can only Let's take a look at Buddy McGrady in action. Here's a jab, hook, right hand, another hook. Take his head out of his eye. And another short hook. We didn't get past the whole tell on the telephone bill yet. Yeah, you know, we pay for the They're having a good time in the corner. Now, you see Buddy's haircuts. See how long his hair is? Al Cerdo standing there and saying, take the hair out of his eyes. <laughs> They're having a good time in McGirt's corner. Clearly a one-sided fight. And McGirt getting in the work. As he steps into the welterweight division. Looking to establish himself as a full-fledged welterweight. And a right hand. against the full-fledged welterweight, Sam. Wow. <laughs> Young James liked it. Yeah, Daddy did it. Buddy McGirt ends it in the fifth round. Knowing what he set out to do, certainly there was no question about his speed and his moves. Orozco saying, what hit me? Round. And that right hand that was so suspect, That's right? He handed that one big right hand at the beginning of the round, that was it. Al Cerdo congratulates let's, Buddy McGirt. Let's take another look at that punch, Buddy. Sam, it came so fast. There it is, right on the jaw. See the delayed reaction, but an indication of how quick McGirt is with his punches. Oh, he, 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 he just showed everything, Sam. The round before that, he did a textbook job of boxing. Then he comes out with the first punch in the next round and shows you how to bomb a guy out. Well, you see what happens when they took the hair out of his eyes. You can see his opponent. Exactly right. <laughs> no, it was bothering him earlier in the fight. I can notice that. <laughs> that's, that's a great picture. Yeah, it's terrific, huh? Now, I don't know if, if young James will grow up to be a boxer, but he's got some boxer in dad. McGirt scoring his 35th knockout in 42 wins. He is 42, 2, and 1. The loss is coming to Frankie Warren and to Meldrick Taylor. He avenged the first Warren loss by winning the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship against Frankie Warren. And he's hoping someday to avenge that Meldrick Taylor loss. Well, you know, he's, he's an optimist. He says, I'll win that welterweight championship, and then, then Taylor will eventually come to me. Let's get the official announcement from Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, the time of this bout, 21 seconds of the fifth round, and the winner by a knockout, James Buddy McGirt. McGirt. And a nice round of applause for Orlando Orozco. Let's hear it for him. Buddy McGirt, clearly outclassing Orlando Orozco and finishing him early in the fifth round. Gil will be talking with Buddy McGirt when we come back. Stay with us. Any question about the power of Buddy McGirt and the effect it would have on full-fledged welterweights answered here in the fifth round as McGirt lands the overhand right and puts the lights out on Orlando Orozco. And in the ring with Buddy McGirt is our Gil Clancy. Let's go to Gil right now. Well, Buddy, congratulations. Thank you very much, Gil. You showed the power as a welterweight. Was there any doubt in your mind that you could handle a welterweight? Not at all, Gil. You know, I've been boxing with middleweights in the gym, and I know that I'm the best out there. You know, it's just a matter of time, and nature took its course, and I'm ready for the welterweights now. You know, Buddy, in this fight, the round before that, I thought you gave a boxing clinic. You showed the fans everything a fighter has to do. You fainted, you punched to the body, you punched to the head. It was just a perfect example for any young fellow to, to look at if he wants to learn how to box. Then you went out in the next round and bombed him out with one punch. Did Al... Oh, yeah, they told you to get the hair out of your eyes. Yeah. Well, you know, Al and uh, Aldo here, Fabrizio, they help me in the gym every day. And this is my main man, Aldo Fabrizio. My good luck, John. Well, you know, I've seen Aldo working in the gym. He does a real good job. And Al Soto helps quite a bit, too. What's next, Al? Well, uh, we're looking uh, forward to the uh, Tony Baltazar fight. I hope... Uh, I believe it's July the 9th on uh, CBS, 
and uh, we're ready for him. Then after that, we, I hope we get a, a title shot. Buddy, any of the welterweight champions that you particularly like to fight of any of the three? I fight any of the three because if I pick one, the other two might feel neglected. So I just, any of the three I fight. Hey, sounds great. Very confident. And you handled the welterweight very well. Now let's go back to Sam Rosen at ringside. Thanks, Gil. Congratulations to James Buddy McGirt once again leaving Madison Square Garden's felt form a winner. That's always happened when he's fought here. Night at the felt form in a moment.